Oceans cover 70% of our planet, so the Earth is really a water planet. The oceans are teeming with life. But it's only in the last hundred years or so that we humans have been able to begin to really explore the mysteries of the sea. People in tropical waters have been scratching the surface for centuries. To see underwater, they invented goggles and face plates. They also started breathing through a little tube that we now call the snorkel. The snorkel lets divers keep breathing while looking down. It amounts to having a blowhole, just like whales and dolphins. Soon, people took other lessons from sea creatures, like fins. Fins enabled people to swim faster and further without getting tired. With these advancements, humans began to explore coral reefs and other wonders of shallow water. But they couldn't go deep without holding their breath, and you can't do that forever. In the early 1800s, underwater hard hat diving apparatus like this one were developed. Hard hat divers wear a big metal helmet attached to a hose that brings air from the surface. Now divers could finally go deeper and stay longer, but there were some big limitations. For one thing, they had to wear heavy lead boots to keep from popping to the surface like corks. And then there's the air hose. As every dog knows, it's hard to go where you want when you're on a leash. Believe it or not, one of the next big plunges in diving history took place a long way from the ocean, here in the mountains of central France. In the late 1800s, in the tiny town of Espalion, a man by the name of Rucarol invented the technology behind this apparatus to assist men trapped in underground coal mines in the local mountains. Then, his friend Denarus suggested that they adapt it to work underwater. Worn on the diver's back, this apparatus allowed him to choose to be connected to the surface or to let go of the leash thanks to a tank holding a small amount of compressed air. It worked, and it still works today more than 100 years later. Here, Jean-Michel Cousteau gives the antique Rucarol Denabrus apparatus a test dive. The system included the first commercially manufactured demand regulator and can be considered to be the ancestor of modern diving. Then, in the first half of the 20th century, inventors like Captain Le Poyer, Jacques Cousteau, and Emile Gagnon took this concept one step further and came up with the Aqualung and let the divers off their leashes for good. Using a regulator mouthpiece attached to a short hose to breathe pressurized air in tanks he wears on his back, the diver doesn't need the big hard hat or the hose from the surface anymore. So divers can go many more places than before, and instead of clomping around on the bottom like Frankenstein, they can swim horizontally like a fish. These menfish, as Jacques Cousteau called them, could now begin to really explore the almost three quarters of our planet that had always been closed to us. We learned about kelp, corals, fish, and even whales and dolphins. But our penetration of the sea was still limited. That's because due to problems with pressure, divers breathing compressed air can only go about 200 feet down without getting hurt. To extend the limits, something new was needed. No, this isn't an astronaut. It's a diver in what's called a newt suit. The newt suit is a pressure-resistant suit made of high-tech metal. Using one of these contraptions, a diver can breathe air at surface pressure and go over 1,000 feet down. Instead of swimming, these divers rely on little motors to propel them through the depths. It's kind of like wearing your own personal submarine. So in a little more than a century, diving technology has now taken us where we've wanted to go for millions of years, thousands of feet beneath the sea. But even so, many mysteries remain. 40% of the world's oceans are so deep they remain inaccessible to all but the most sophisticated of submarines. So without a doubt, man will continue his quest to go deeper for longer.